Today, I'm gonna to teach you exactly how you can start your own liquidity mining business and start earning passive income on your crypto assets. Let's hop right in. Now, it's important that we understand what number one, DeFi is, number two, crypto, obviously, and number three, liquidity mining. So we'll start with cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is obviously just digital currencies. A lot of us know what cryptocurrencies are. They're alternate assets to the US dollar. And the ultimate goal behind a lot of cryptocurrencies is to make money and to bring use cases to their holders. But a lot of the times there are cryptocurrencies like Dogecoin or SHIB that don't have much use case at all. And those are the ones that we avoid. Because remember, since we are starting our own liquidity mining business, we want to be safe and we want to be calculated in the assets that we are liquidity mining for, which means we want to look for assets that are going to have a solid use case. Additionally, let's talk a little bit about DeFi. Decentralized finance is an alternate financial system that runs on blockchain technology and utilizes cryptocurrencies. In short summary, blockchains are just decentralized networks. Instead of Amazon Web Services hosting a ton of different servers for, let's just say, the company Microsoft, what's happening is Microsoft servers would be hosted by a ton of different people all around the world, making the network decentralized. Now, obviously, Microsoft is not decentralized whatsoever, but a lot of the companies in the DeFi space obviously are decentralized or run on decentralized blockchains. So one of those blockchains is going to be the Ethereum network. It's currently the largest DeFi network, has about $50 billion in TVL, but basically there's people all around the world hosting the Ethereum network and validating transactions on it, which means if a couple validators go down in the United States or even every United States validator goes down, well, guess what? The Ethereum network is not affected whatsoever. And that's because it's a completely decentralized network and nobody is in control. So essentially decentralized finance is just ran on decentralized networks and also adds to the fact that nobody is in control. You don't have these intermediaries where they process your transactions for you and take three to five days everything goes through instantly and then of course liquidity mining is the next aspect liquidity mining is a little bit trickier of a concept to understand but it's the basis of providing liquidity for assets that we are bullish on so maybe I'm bullish on Matic and Bitcoin Then I'll go and provide liquidity for two assets Matic and Bitcoin basically in the same exact pool a liquidity pool consists of two different assets basically so I have Matic and Bitcoin in this pool currently 17,000 Matic tokens and 0 0.03 wrap Bitcoin tokens that makes up about 19 thousand dollars and by providing liquidity i'm essentially liquidity mining and i'm able to earn the fees that traders are paying so whenever somebody goes and swaps their matic for bitcoin they are paying a fee in matic as you can see if they were to swap ten thousand dollars of matic which is basically ten thousand matic you can see they're going to be routed through a few different liquidity pools and in the matic to bitcoin pool they're going to be routed through the 0.05 percent tier so on ten thousand dollars they are paying a very very little fee about five dollars or so but that fee is going to liquidity providers in the pool and when there's billions of dollars of overall volume collectively in the DeFi space every single day, these fees start to add up very, very well for liquidity providers. And we're able to earn APRs upwards near 70 to 100% per year. So the basis of liquidity mining, we're facilitating trades, allowing these trades to be executed. And in return, we are being paid for facilitating these trades. We are being paid the fees, basically. This is the classic concept of market making, like a lot of different stockbrokers have, or even centralized exchanges in crypto have, except the fees are much, much lower for the trader, and they go directly to the people that are providing liquidity as opposed to them going to a large institution and the little guys like you and me being cut out and when I say little guys you can have a million bucks and you're still a little guy compared to somebody that has a billion bucks but as far as starting the liquidity mining business goes the first thing you're gonna have to do is obviously set up your wallet I personally prefer a ledger nano X wallet paired with Rabi, and that's essentially gonna allow you to access all these decentralized applications remember everything's decentralized it's not based on accounts you simply head over to connect and you hit Rabi, or you hit whatever wallet you're using and then boom, you're connected to Uniswap or you're connected to Orca or whatever exchange you are using. And then from there, you're able to execute trades and trade one asset for another asset. But at the same exact time, you're able to provide liquidity as easy as that. And we're not going to go too in depth into that, but I want to talk a little bit about liquidity mining as a business. And when I say starting a liquidity mining business, I'm not actually talking and going, getting an LLC registered or going out and getting a legal entity or anything like that. Really, it's pretty simple. I'm talking about you are providing a service and that service service is basically running a business. It's important for us to treat this like a business because ultimately if we do treat it like a business, we are going to get better returns than if we treat it as a hobby and we don't really monitor it or care. So by having that analytical approach, that strategic approach, that's going to allow us to get the best possible returns. Now, obviously in a business, the first thing that you're going to do is outline your plan and your goals. So you'd want to open up a Google doc and go and actually outline your plan and goals. Now I'm going to share this doc down below in the description, but my initial plan is going to be provide liquidity for assets that I'm bullish on 
outperform if I were to just hodl in the market because some risk that we do have as a liquidity provider is going to be in permanent loss. And permanent loss basically represents the difference of if we were to hold our money in the market compared to if we're in a liquidity pool. So to show you exactly what impermanent loss is, I want to talk about my Matic to wrap Bitcoin position. I deployed slightly over $21,000 in this position. It's currently worth 19.5K. When you factor in the $656 in earnings that I have so far in this pool, it's worth roughly 20.3K. So that puts me at an overall $800 loss. But what I want to look at is this compare to HODL number. This essentially says, hey, if I were to hold in the market, I would have $373 less than if I was in this liquidity pool. The reason why is because my fees are high. I have about 650 bucks in fees that I have collected so far. However, if we were to look at this in permanent loss number, basically, this says $283, which means that if I were to hold my money in the market, I have $19,883. Since I'm in the liquidity pool, I have $19,600 but I am outperforming that impermanent loss because I have the fees. If my fees were less than the impermanent loss, that's a bad indication because that means that I am not outperforming the market. But since my fees are significantly higher than the impermanent loss, I am outperforming the market. I'm not gonna dive too much deeper into that. We have a lot of resources on the channel, so make sure to drop a like and subscribe notifications turned on, but also check out some of the other content I've posted on the channel before. Now, I also wanna earn passive income of 70% APR per year, which is pretty reasonable. That means if I'm deploying $100,000, I wanna earn $70,000 per year in terms of fees alone. And I also want my $100,000 to appreciate over time. So I'm going to look for assets that have high growth potential, but also have high yields on them. So first things first are the assets, right? What assets am I going to include in my portfolio? Number one, I'm going to include Bitcoin. Number two, Ethereum. I'm also going to do Sol and AVAX because these are also blue chip assets in my mind. And then we start to get into some of the other altcoins. We have Link, we have Matic, we have Render, we have GRT. These are all assets that I truly believe in. We also have Tau. And you can go and find those assets on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap. I recommend you just head over to these sites and then go ahead and start clicking on assets and analyzing and actually looking at the use case behind that asset. So we could pull up Aptos, for example. If we scroll down, it'll tell you exactly what's recently happened to Aptos. And you can also find some information about Aptos. There's also a news section if you want to learn more about what's happening in the ecosystem. But overall, these are some tokens that I want to include in my portfolio. Maybe I also want to include ARB. Maybe I also want to include OP and INJ. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that OP, ARB, INJ. So boom, I got a solid list of assets right here. The next thing I'm going to do is start to determine what I can pair together. So when it comes to pairing assets together, we're going to analyze the top decentralized exchanges across a couple different networks. If we're doing anything with Ethereum network or Polygon network or Arbitrum network or even Optimism network, we are going to analyze on the info.uniswap.org page. So for example, if it's on the Ethereum network, I'll be on info.uniswap.org, I'll select Ethereum, and then I'm going to start to find the asset to make sure that a liquidity pool is there. So first things first, I'm going to go Bitcoin ETH, Bitcoin Sol, Bitcoin AVAX, Bitcoin Link, et cetera, et cetera, basically. I'm basically pairing Bitcoin with all these assets. But then after I list these out, I need to determine which ones I can actually do. So Bitcoin AVAX, we would want to head over to Trader Joe. Bitcoin ETH, we would want to head over to Uniswap. And then Bitcoin Solana, we would want to head over to Orca. But what do we do once we're on those sites? So let's pull that up. Ethereum network right here. We're going to type in BTC. And quick little note for Bitcoin, we're going to be using wrap Bitcoin because we can't do anything with native Bitcoin because it is the exclusive asset on the Bitcoin network. Now, basically, we would type in wrap Bitcoin over here on the info.uniswap.org page. Occasionally, it is going to be down like this. So an alternate site that you can use is Builder Metrics. Now, this is our own software. It's 100 percent free to use and we're launching a ton of features pretty soon. So make sure to check that out. I'm going to leave it down below in the description. But we would basically go over to Uniswap V3, Ethereum network, and we could type Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then it's going to go ahead and pull this up and tell us where liquidity is allocated. So in this scenario, if we hit 0.3%, you could see, hey, we got literally 530 mil of TVL in this pool. So that's not too bad. We can definitely do Bitcoin Ethereum. And obviously, we would do that with every other Uniswap pair on here. Now, when it comes to Bitcoin ABEX, once again, heading over to Trader Joe, going over to pool, and then we would go in here and we would type WBTC. And you're going to notice, well, with WBTC, there's only WBTC paired with BTCB. There's no WBTC paired with AVAX. 
Well, there is, but as you can see, there's no money in liquidity except 60 cents. So we're not going to count that because obviously we're not going to make any money if we deploy into that. So instead, I'm just going to type Bitcoin and that's going to show me all stuff that includes Bitcoin. So specifically Bitcoin B AVAX, this basically just stands for Bitcoin bridged on the Avalanche network. It's like wrap Bitcoin. So we could do Bitcoin AVAX as well. And then over on Orca, we'll head over to liquidity section right here. Now it will say this feature is not supported in your country or region. If you're in the United States, no worries. That's only for this trading aspect of Orca. If we hit liquidity, we can provide liquidity. The other aspect is smart contracts cannot be limited to a location. Smart contracts are the back end. Orca.so, the website is a front end. So they're essentially just not allowing us to use the front end. If we really wanted to, we could go interact directly with the smart contracts. Instead, it's easier to just throw on a VPN if you really want to trade on Orca. But with that being said, over here for token, we type in Bitcoin. There's a lot of different versions of Bitcoin here. I'll make it easy for you. You want to look for wrapped Bitcoin wormhole right here. And you'll notice there's WBTC Soul right here. So we'll go ahead and throw that on our list as well. And that's essentially what we're going to do for all these assets on this list. I'm going to go through, I'm going to put all these together, crunch the pairs together, and then come back to you. And a quick little side note, you'll notice that I actually removed Bitcoin Link because we can't do Bitcoin Link. And I found that by going over to Builder Metrics, seeing if there was a Bitcoin Link pool, and there actually wasn't a Bitcoin Link pool. Also, for this pool for Ethereum to Soul, you'll actually notice that it's on Orca as well as it's on Uniswap. So there's two different options for Ethereum to Soul. So I went through and I took all these assets, I crunched them together, and I found all the different pairs that I can do for these specific assets. So now I got a big list of assets that I need to go through, find ranges for these pools, and then eventually deploy into it. Now, personally, I'm not deploying into all of these because that's going to be a very big pain to actually manage. I'm only going to end up deploying into like five or so different positions because, of course, I want this to be somewhat passive. I want to earn that passive income. So the next step I would do is go and find different ranges for these pools. And obviously, we have a ton of content on the channel about finding ranges for the liquidity pools but i will go ahead and give you a briefing let's head over to uniswap v3 on the ethereum network and just pull up that wrap bitcoin to ethereum liquidity pool now personally i think ethereum is going to outperform wrap bitcoin so i'm going to do something in this pool that i really recommend you look into i'm going to weight more of my assets towards ethereum now i can't just say that i want to deploy more ethereum than bitcoin in this pool i have to adjust my range based on that so first things first, I'm going to try to capture the last 30 days worth of data, which this chart is showing 30 days right here. But then I'm going to bring my min price and I'm going to adjust that until I have about 65 or 60% Ethereum. In this case scenario, I have 65% Ethereum, 35% wrapped Bitcoin, and I'm getting about 21% per year. So my range, 15.8 to 21.5. I'm just going to jot that down right there, 15.8 to 21.5. That's my range for this concentrated liquidity pool, and that is earning a 20% APR, basically. Essentially, what I'm going to want to do is analyze wrapped Bitcoin to Ethereum on all the different fee tiers, as well as all the different networks that it's on. So since this is a highly adopted pair, it's also on Arbitrum, it's also on Polygon, it's also on Optimism, so on and so forth. I'm going to want to analyze it on all those networks to see what's giving me the best possible return. For simplicity purposes, I'm just going to jot this one down, write the range, write the APR, but I'd also go ahead and do that for all the other pools. Now we're just going to assume for simplicity purposes that I went through, I found ranges for all these, and bear in mind, this is going to take time. This is not easy, but same exact thing with starting a business. Once we have data and research on all of these, for example, we're going to select the ones that we want to deploy into. In my case scenario, I would be comfortable deploying into these four right here. So I have the ranges, I have the APRs. Now it's time to figure out how much money I'm deploying into each position. So I could lay these positions out on a spreadsheet just like this and then start to determine allocation. So personally, I think this wrap Bitcoin to ETH one is going to be the lowest possible risk. So I'm going to want to allocate a higher portion of my portfolio to it. And we're going to assume that I have about $100,000 to deploy into these positions. Keep in mind, you can deploy any amount of capital. There's no limits in DeFi. I would just only recommend going into liquidity pools or concentrated liquidity pools for that fact if you have above $10,000. And that's just to make these returns worth it for the amount of time that you'd have to put in, which is typically going to be about three to four hours per week after you've kind of established your portfolio and everything like that. So personally, I'm going to say about $40,000 to wrap Bitcoin ETH, as well as I'm going to say about $20,000 over here to wrap Bitcoin Soul, $20,000 to ETH Soul and then of course 20,000 to ETH render. The reason why is because I think these three positions right here, very blue chip, this one starts to get into the higher risk asset because render is a higher risk asset, but it's still multi-billion dollar market cap. It's done really well over the previous months. But then we could just kind of multiply that by our APR and then that's gonna give us a yearly yield and we can calculate how much money we're actually gonna make per day as soon as we deploy basically. So I'm just gonna bring that in and divide this 8,000 by 365 and do that for the rest of these. 
Now, when I add that all together, that's going to give me the overall amount of money that I'm going to make in this portfolio. So essentially, that's about $70,000 per year, 189 bucks per day. And when we do the math, I am making roughly 70% APR. So it fits my goals. I'm going to want to go ahead and deploy into this portfolio and actually open these positions up over on Uniswap as well as on Orca. And then, of course, after opening them up, we need to take a business approach when it comes to tracking our positions and we need to have an advanced tracking sheet for our actual positions. My tracking sheet looks something like this. I do need to go through, update the price data. However, it's pretty advanced. It shows me all my key performance indicators. It'll show me overall profit and loss for positions and overall gives me a really good insight into how my portfolio or my business is actually doing in terms of DeFi passive income. So tracking is very, very important. But yeah, that's the basis of this strategy. So while this is running a business basically, because number one, we're providing a service and number two, we need to take a business approach to be serious about this and make sure that we are tracking things properly and this isn't just kind of some side hustle or some side gig but actually some really good form of income this is the approach that I would take if I was starting all over again, having a structured approach. And for those of you that already have over $30,000 invested into crypto or ready to invest into crypto, we do have a five phase program where we help you build out a passive income portfolio through decentralized finance. We're literally going to do the portfolio build out for you. Hop on the one on one calls to make sure that you have support. And this consistently works. Basically, we can have your portfolio deployed in as little as two weeks, as well as have it fully optimized, managed and running in as little as a month. I'm going to leave a link to a free training that explains exactly what decentralized finance is, how you can make the passive income off of decentralized finance, as well as they'll give you a good overview on what we actually do at Builder Wealth. We worked with over 80 clients in the past and have had amazing results. Our clients are now collectively making over $300,000 per month. And if you like what you see in that presentation, hit the book a call button and apply to book a call with myself today. We'll explore the opportunity of working together. If you enjoyed this video, found it informative, drop a like, subscribe, and notifications turned on, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.